Now in this last part, we're told that the ground is soft and after P reaches the ground, P sinks vertically downwards into the ground before coming to rest. And the mass of P is four kilograms and the ground is assumed to exert a constant resistive force of magnitude 5,000 newtons on P. And what we've got to do in this final part is find the vertical distance that P sinks into the ground before coming to rest. So if you haven't had a go at this and you want to just try it, just pause the video and uh, come back and uh, when ready and I'll work through the solution for you. Okay, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is just sketch a diagram to give me an idea of what's going on. So I've got the ground here and we know that P hits the ground, we're told in the earlier part of the question, with a speed of 28 meters per second. So it starts at this point at 28 meters per second. And then it's going to travel through the ground, slowing down as it goes. So there's our particle P, okay? And it's going to decelerate as it goes through the ground. Eventually coming to rest. Let's say it comes to rest at this point down here, zero meters per second then. And during this interval it's traveled a distance a distance which we're going to call s and it's that that we have to find let's just call it s there okay s meters so it's entered the ground then at 28 meters per second slows down comes to rest so if it's slowing down changing its speed there's an acceleration an acceleration i'm going to put in here with a double arrow and just call it a and I would expect A to be a negative value because it's decelerating. What else would I need to put on this diagram? Well, we're given forces. So we need to put on the fact that it's got weight. We know its mass is four kilograms. So therefore its weight downwards would be mg, 4g. Okay, 4g newtons. And as it moves through the ground, there's this constant resistive force of magnitude 5,000 newtons. So that's going to act opposing the motion through the ground. So it's going to act upwards here. We'll mark that in as 5,000 newtons then. So I think we've got everything that we need uh, at this point. So to work out S, I'm going to need to turn to a SUVAT-based equation. S for displacement, U for initial velocity, V final velocity, A acceleration, and T for time. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to set up a positive sense, first of all. And positive sense is up to you which way you go, but it just seems sensible for this problem to take downwards as positive because it's clearly moving in a downwards direction here. So we'll take downwards as positive. And if that's the case, well, we're trying to find S. We know U. U, the initial velocity was positive 28, okay, because it's in the positive sense. V, the final velocity is zero, all right? Acceleration, aha, we don't know what the acceleration is. T, we don't even know what T is. So we're a little bit stuck here. We can't find out what S is until we either establish what A or T is. Well, it has to be A because we're dealing with forces here. So that means that we've got to consider using Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. So I'm going to resolve in a downward sense, taking downwards as positive in the direction of acceleration. So looking at the forces acting downwards, we've got plus 4g, because that's in the positive sense. So we've got 4g. Then we've got minus the 5,000 newtons, so minus 5,000. And 
This now is the resultant force acting on P, and this must equal the mass times the acceleration. Well, we know the mass of P is 4 kilograms, so we've got 4 there, and then we've got A. So to get A, all I need to do is rearrange this. Do 4 times G, G being 9.8, and then minus 5,000, and then divide by 4, and that will give us the value of A. And if you do that, you end up with A being a negative number, as we would expect, because it's decelerating, and then it's minus 1240.2, and that'd be meters per second per second. So we've now got our value of A, which we can put into here as minus 1240.2. So what equation would we use then to connect S, U, V, and A? Well, it's got to be V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, an equation that you should be familiar with. So we just write it up here. So we've got V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And we can fill these values in. V was 0, so we've got 0 squared, or just simply 0. I'll write it as 0 squared, though, at this stage. And it equals u squared, which is going to be 28 squared, plus 2 times the acceleration, minus 1240.2, and then we multiply that by s. So if we work out what 28 squared is, we've therefore got 0 equals well, 28 squared turns out to be 784. So we've got 784 there. And then if we do 2 times minus 1240.2, we end up with minus 2480.4s. Add this term to both sides, you then get 2480.4 times s equals 784. And divide now both sides by 2480.4 to give s. So s equals 784 divided by 2480.4. And if you do this on your calculator, you find you get 0 0.3160 and so on. And if we round this to, say, three significant figures, it's going to be 0 0.316. That'd be given in meters, and we'll say that's to three significant figures, 3SF. Okay, so that was giving you an idea on this particular part of the problem, uh, if it was giving you any difficulty.